A few weeks ago, I used a natural plant dye to try to dye some yarn an indigo blue color. If you watched that video, you'll know that I messed up a little bit on my first attempt and I ended up making this dusty pink rosy colored yarn instead. And I mentioned at the time that I had this sweater pattern picked out from the 1920s that I thought this yarn would be perfect for. Seeing as I've been on a bit of a 1920s kick lately, I thought that this would be the perfect time to knit up this 1920s sweater pattern. The sweater pattern itself is called the Ogden sweater and it is more of a cardigan I guess rather than a sweater, although is a cardigan a type of sweater? I'm not really sure, but I actually really like how it looks and how it sits and I think that I will be giving this away as a gift to someone who I know will really appreciate it. So I'm actually really excited to use some more of my natural plant dyed yarn and get started with some knitting. The yarn that I'm using is Knit Pick Simply Wool, which I dyed with Dyer's Woad to this dusty pink color. If you're interested to see how I managed to do that, I will leave a link in the description as well as in the pop-up in the top right. Many times when you're looking at modern sweater patterns, you'll see that the construction is mentioned either as top down or bottom up, but this one is kind of unique. It is knit, I guess, back to front, starting at the bottom back, working up over the shoulders down to the front. So both bottom up and top down at the same time while knitting flat. So here you can see that I am starting at the bottom back and I decided to add some ribbing to the bottom. The original pattern didn't call for the ribbing, but I did see in the picture that the bottom of the cardigan rolls up a little bit, which stockinette knit tends to do. So I decided to add some ribbing so that it would be less frustrating to wear this sweater as I didn't want it to roll up all the time. And I just really love the stockinette stitch that's interrupted every once in a while with a purl stitch because it adds this beautiful pinstripe look to the sweater. So I am now just going to knit the entire back from bottom to top. back of the sweater is complete and I am now decreasing on both sides for the arm size. Once the decreases are done, I'm going to cast off some stitches in the middle for the neck opening and work on each side independently. So I have one half of the shoulder front on stitch holders while I am actively knitting from the top of the shoulder down to the bottom of the front of the other side of the sweater. If my previous explanations for how this cardigan or sweater is constructed were a little bit confusing, hopefully this is a little bit more illuminating or descriptive. I just panned up the back of the sweater and you can see I have completely finished one of the front flaps, which gets folded over at the shoulder point and then sewn together from underneath the arm all the way down the front. So I have completely finished one half of the front and now I'm going to take the stitches off of the stitch holders from the other shoulder and knit the exact same thing one more time to finish up the body of the sweater. 
By the magic of time travel, I have now completely finished knitting the other front side of the sweater, and I have actually already sewn on the left side to the body, and so now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the right hand side. I don't actually know what these uh, stitches are called. Is it a mattress stitch? I'm not exactly sure, but this is what I decided to use in order to sew up the sides of the sweater. <laughs> Now the sweater is a little short, so I wanted to stretch it out a little bit by blocking it. I don't have a ton of my blocking materials here, so to make it easier on myself, I dampened the sweater and then hung it up to dry and stretch out in my shower. Once the body was completely dried, it was time to work on the sleeves. Something I'm really thankful for in this sweater is that these sleeves are knit by picking up stitches around the arm side and then knitting towards the wrists instead of knitting separate sleeves that then have to be sewn on. I'm not really a fan of having to sew together a lot of pieces of my knitting, so I'm glad that this is the way that this sweater is constructed. At this point, I'm also running dangerously low on the amount of wool I have available. So while the original sweater has long sleeves, I decided to make this a short sleeve version because I only had three balls of hand dyed wool available and I was having a really hard time trying to color match the wool that I had hand dyed. So I think it's okay that it is slightly short sleeved and I actually really like how it looks. I ended up following the original decreasing pattern around the sleeves and you can see me here kind of analyzing that it might be a little baggy so if you decide to knit this sweater yourself I would recommend maybe starting the decreases earlier because I think that the decreases as written end up making a little too much fabric and material right at the underarms. However, it does allow for a good amount of mobility, so I don't think it's too bad. I decided not to re-knit the sleeves. I don't think it bothers me all that much, and I hope that it won't bother the person that I'm gifting it to too much either. Now that the main body of the sweater is done, I have to knit the extra pieces. So that would include the area where the sweater or cardigan actually buttons up in the front. So I am knitting the button flaps, I guess you would call them. I'm making two identical. One just has the button holes and the other one is where the buttons will actually be attached to. <laughs> Something you might notice about these button flaps is that they don't go the entire length up the cardigan. And you might've noticed that in the original illustration as well, is that the cardigan only buttons up about a third or half of the way. And the rest of the space is actually gonna be filled with a shawl collar that is knit separately. And the original pattern also actually calls for a different color for the shawl collar. So I decided to use this beautiful cream colored yarn. It is a not from Knit Picks this time, it's from Woolfolk, which is probably far more expensive of a yarn than I usually go for, but it is so, so soft around the neck. And as I don't currently have any of my usual tools available, I had to hand wind this yarn into a ball and then knit the shawl collar, which comes to a point at each end. <laughs> The shawl collar is plain garter stitch, but I feel like I was trying to pay a lot of attention to the tension of my stitches because I feel like it's pretty obvious if your tension isn't even and the spacing between your garter ridges aren't the same. So I tried to pay as much attention as I could to the tension of my rows to make it look nice and even for a beautiful finish on the cardigan. I ended up not having enough yarn at the beginning. This is one ball of the wool folk yarn that I used, so I had to go out and buy another in order to actually finish the shawl collar. And here you can see it all laid out before I've actually sewn it all together. And I think it looks absolutely beautiful. I love how the colors 
work so well together. I wasn't sure that they would, but I, I do really like how it looks. I ended up blocking the shawl collar a little bit before sewing it on because even though I followed the instructions as written, mine does look a little bit shorter than what was in the original image. So I wanted to stretch out the collar a little bit to allow it to actually tie in the front when the cardigan is worn. And of course, the last step is to sew the button flaps on as well as the shawl collar to the cardigan. While I'm still a little bit self-conscious of filming myself in public, I am super excited that this 1920s cardigan is done. I really like how it looks and I really love that I was able to use what was originally a mistake in dyeing a yarn color for this beautiful pattern and I ended up with this really nice cardigan that I'm super excited to gift. Thank you all again so much for watching. If you're interested, I will leave the links down below to the yarns that I used and the pattern that I used and some other links to some other patterns and places where I also post my work. And I hopefully will see you next time because I am going to be working on some more 1920s historical crocheting. I hope to see you then.